Psyche Truth. Life. Wisdom. Hi, I'm Catherine Elizabeth. Welcome to day five of my 10 day flexibility challenge. Today we're going to be doing a lot of the same exercises that you might have seen earlier in the, in the series, but we're going to take it a little bit faster, reinforcing that strong and flexible foundation that we've been building in our core. And today, in celebration of making it halfway through our 10-day flexibility challenge, I'm wearing a lovely gumball leotard given to me by Cahoots and Move and Easy Dancewear in Austin, Texas. I think everyone deserves to celebrate. You've been working hard, so don't be afraid to reward yourself. I think it's really important to indulge every once in a while and treat yourself well. So today I'm wearing some candy, but my favorite indulgence I think is coconut milk ice cream. That's my go-to sweet treat. What's your favorite food? What's your favorite indulgence? Leave me a comment, I would love to know. Today we're gonna start with a bit of a cardio warm-up. So this is really gonna get the blood pumping to all of your muscles. It's gonna help mobilize your spine uh, to prepare for the exercises ahead. So let's start by walking to the end of your mat. So the exercise begins with a leap. You're gonna jump into the air, and using the momentum of your landing, you're just going to continue the movement, rocking back onto your heels into a deep squat, and eventually rolling onto your back, bringing your knees to your forehead, and using that momentum to lead you to the next jump. Now, it's actually a little bit fast, uh, easier to go a little bit faster, because you get to use that momentum a bit more. Now you can use your hands on your way up. See if you can do it with no hands. Let's do it together. Now step a couple steps from your mat for this final jump. We're going to go right into our plow and just fold over. Go ahead and engage your abs, bringing your belly button to your spine, feeling a nice stretch in the lower back, pressing your clasped hands into the mat behind your back. And from here, we're going to go ahead and attempt a shoulder stand. So you want to engage your abs, draw your knees toward your forehead. And then you're gonna use that glute strength to press your hips forward towards your face. And you really wanna point your feet towards the ceiling. But to really make it straight, I also think of driving my heels in the direction of my glutes. So I'm really pressing as though I'm trying to hit my heels to my back. That's really gonna give you that length there. And if this becomes too tiring to hold, you can always return to a plow. So go ahead and try that one more time. Knees to the forehead. Contract the glutes. Feel a stretch at the front of your hips. Drive the heels forward. You can walk your shoulders in, give you a nice stable base. And when you're ready, exhale, pull the navel into the spine, and try to roll down with control. And now we're just gonna bring that to a basic forward fold. Let's so go ahead and sit up on your mat. Feet out in front of you, chest is tall. So remember to open your chest, chest is heading to the shins, try not to curl the upper body. Deep breath in and fold forward. Again, you can use this in a flow if you're not ready to hold that stretch. Just always exhale on the way down and actively pull your legs towards your face with your arms. 
would always keep the shoulders away from the ears. And roll up. Take that flexibility with you as you go onto your back for some ad work. So we're gonna bring our knees to tabletop 90 degrees. Try not to bring them any further into your chest than 90. You really want to feel a little bit of space between your thighs and your hips. Because from here, we're just going to simply extend one leg at a time and return it to that starting position. Now this might not seem like it's very difficult. It's very easy to do incorrectly. If your knees are close to your chest, you're gonna feel it a lot more in your quads and your hips. We really wanna feel this in our lower abs, so move your legs a little bit farther than maybe you think is 90 degrees and work from here. You should feel a real extension and stretch right on the side of your abs there. So we go out with the right with a pointed toe, keeping our legs parallel, not twisting. Again, this exercise is really good for feeling your legs and abs working separately. A lot of the ab exercises that we're used to compound those two groups, the abs working together with the legs. But we wanna be able to access each independently as well. And if this is still too easy or if you are still feeling it more in your legs, you can take that bent knee even farther out than 90 degrees as you extend. And again, think of your belly as being as small as possible. You really want to think, I think of my, my abs as almost like a tree trunk. It's just very solid and very compact. The more solid it is, the more stability it's going to offer to the rest of your body. And the way I access that compactness, that nice solid feeling is to always draw is to always draw my navel towards my spine just a couple more per side one to the left and one to the right and let that go Good job. Now we're gonna take that feeling of lengthening through our hips even further with this next exercise. So we're going to extend our legs out in front of us and using our abdomen on an exhale, we're gonna to attempt to lift both feet at the same time in one smooth line. And slowly with control, bring them back down. So we're gonna take that feeling of lengthening through the hips into this next exercise. We're gonna squeeze our thighs together, feet are together, and we're just going to lift our feet to the sky in one piece. On an exhale, and slowly bring them down. Again, exhale up, pointed toes, legs are squeezed together, and bring them slowly to the mat. This really challenges your abs to remain stable as this weight is shifting around. You might notice that the weight becomes harder to carry and to control the weight in your legs as you get lower and lower to the ground. So in fact, if you want to challenge, you can actually hover a little bit over the floor, just a few inches off. About six inches off the floor, if you just hold it here, you might start to shake, it might be a little bit more challenging. And again on an exhale, lift the feet together. Try to keep your lower back close to the mat as possible. Especially here as we bring it down, you don't want too much of an arch in your lower back. And just remember to keep breathing. 
Make sure your neck is relaxed. We'll just do a few more of these. Exhale up, remember your belly button pulling into your spine. Lower back should be hitting the floor about here when your legs are perpendicular to the mat. And just lengthen that lower spine as you bring your legs down for the last time with control. Hover a few inches for a few seconds if you like and relax. Nice job. And now we're going to flip over to our stomach so that we can release that tension that we just built up in our abs. We're gonna go into our upper back lifts. Let's go ahead and go onto your stomach. Your arms are gonna be in a V, palms facing down. Make sure your shoulders don't creep up to your ears. Always pull them back. Feel the shoulder blades retracting backward down towards your tailbone. Now, on an inhale, you're gonna press your feet into the floor and we're gonna inhale our chests up and our gaze is just forward and we exhale down. Again, inhale up, exhale down. Now you can start to bring your hands a little closer together. This is gonna mimic the kind of motion and mobility you're going to need in your back bend when you're reaching back over your shoulders. So we inhale. You might feel this working your shoulders as well as your upper back. Especially as we bring it in, it's going to be a little bit harder to keep those shoulders away from the ears. Do this a couple more times. We're gonna hold it a little bit longer. Ready, exhale first, and inhale up. Hold it. Exhale down. Bring it in parallel with the arms. Inhale up. And on this next one, we're not gonna go all the way down. Instead, we're gonna go even higher. So exhale and lift it up. Eyes raise up just a little bit. And bring it back down to the mat. Now we're going to reach back into boat pose, which means you're gonna grab the outside of your left foot. You're gonna grab the outside of your right foot. Your thumb should be facing towards the floor. And again, on an inhale, we're gonna not think of lifting our feet up with our arms, but pushing our feet against our hands and our hands pushing against the tops of our feet. So you're gonna have tension. You're gonna have this energy running through your whole body. So on an inhale, we push and Pull against our feet with our arms. And you can rock a couple times if that helps loosen things up, but try to stabilize yourself on your abdomen as you continue to push. And release. Now you wanna think of having your legs still parallel as you go up. Try not to have them flare out too much in that position. So get ready for one more set of boat. Grab the top of the left foot, top of the right foot. Big exhale, <sighs> driving the hips to the ground. Inhale, up, push the hands away with the top of the feet. Balancing on the belly, pulling the shoulders away from the ears, fighting to keep those legs parallel and let that go. Let's do that one more time. This time we're gonna do the same thing we did with our upper back uh, extensions. We're gonna hold it high, exhale, inhale, take it even a little bit, take it even higher. So let's go left, right, 
Prepare with an exhale. Last time, here we go. Inhale, push up. Exhale, and push it up as high as you can. And release. <sighs> nice job. So now we're gonna revisit the push-ups we did at the beginning of this series. See if they feel a little bit different now that we're a little bit stronger here on day five. We're gonna bring our hands a little bit wider than shoulder width. I'm gonna do star push-ups today. You can do a modified push-up on your knees or a full push-up with feet together. But I'm gonna bring my feet out so that they're pretty much making a rectangle with my arms. And I'm gonna do eight push-ups here. Here we go. Eight. Keeping solid through my core, pulling my shoulders away from my ears, and always remembering to breathe. You got it, last one. And relax. So now that we're nice and warm, we can go ahead and try that full back bend. Let's go and take a seat on your mat. Lie down, place your feet hip width distance apart. You could go a little bit wider if it's a little bit easier. Bring your palms face down, fingers facing your body. Try to keep your elbows parallel. And as I said before, when you push up into that back bend, it's really easier if you go all in one piece as opposed to trying to go legs first and then arms. So use your full body, take a nice deep breath, and on an exhale, just push that floor away with your hands and feet. And go ahead and come back down. And as I've said before, if this is too difficult right now, if you're having trouble lifting through your triceps here, go ahead and just go as far as you can with the arms. If you, can, if you want, you can do a sort of a baby back bend, which would just be a press up, tap, and release, just hitting the crown of the head to the, to the yoga mat. But let's do it once more, full out. Just take a couple deep breaths. Okay, you're ready. Let's take a big inhale. Exhale, push up. And if you're achieving this with no problem, go ahead and walk your legs in. See if you can increase that stretch. Always pushing the floor away with your hands. Your gaze is between your fingers, between your palms. And come back down slowly. And go ahead and rest. And now we're just gonna finish strong with a straddle stretch and a split stretch. Go ahead and take the center of your mat. Straddle your legs, nice and easy, no need to go for a full split. We're just stretching our inner thighs. So drive your hip bones evenly towards the floor. Feet are relaxed. Stretch up, over, chest first and just walk out your hands as far as you can, aiming to get your forehead to the floor. And just like in that plow stretch, even though this can be a pretty relaxed position, still think of engaging your abs while you're here. Just makes everything easier. Sometimes I turn my feet in, toes facing forward to get even more of an inner thigh stretch. If you turn them the opposite direction, you're gonna feel it more on the outside of your thigh. And if you have time, I definitely recommend both. 
And you can just walk that out even further as you lengthen up. And go ahead and let that go. And we prepare for our side splits. So come to knees here. Left foot out in front, right foot in the back. Even out the weight, using your hands to guide you. Slide into your splits, body faces forward over that front leg. And we pull our legs away from each other using our feet. Again, you can walk your hands in, go over that back hip. And bring it back. And go ahead and switch to the other side. Now I always say, if you have downtime, if you're just watching TV at home, that's a great time to work on your flexibility. So who needs a couch when you could sit like this? Okay, once you've found your center, you can ring it into the middle, stretch out that back hip. If you are rolling in to stretch out your back hip, it can help to engage that back glute as well to help drive the hip towards the floor. And we bring it back in. Our legs are trying to escape from each other. Sit up nice and tall. Nice deep breath. And go ahead and let that go. Well, congratulations, you've made it through day five of my 10 day flexibility challenge. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can return to this video if you need to and so you can join me on day six. And don't forget to treat yourself today. All right, you guys have a great day. I'll see you next time.